This predates Children of the Corn, the novel or the story by one year. Yeah. So, so what, what does that tell you? I wonder if maybe Stephen King saw this and yeah. hmm. Hello and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Today we're drinking Pinhead Porter. <laughs> nice. It's so drunk, <laughs> wake up in hell with all these hooks in you and everything. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Today we're going to bring to you a Patreon request by Alex Caligoropoulos. And uh, this one is 1976's Who Can Kill a Child? This movie is directed by someone whose name I'm going to butcher right now, and that is... Narciso Ibanez Sarador, I think. <laughs> That's right, I think he got it. <laughs> He's only directed two movies. Yeah. This one and another movie we haven't seen, but it sounds awesome just by the title, The House That Screamed. Mm, yeah. Louis Fiander is in this, and uh, he was in Dr. Fibes Rises Again and Dr. Jekyll and Sister Hyde. A couple of good cult classics there. Yeah. Prunella Ransom is in this too, and she sadly, she passed away quite young, actually. She wasn't uh, able to be in much. This movie starts off kind of strangely. It kind of starts off with all this documentary footage. Different wars throughout time talking about how war has affected the children. Starving and their taken away from their homes and it shows footage from all these awful wars you know the death camps shows the footage from Auschwitz yeah shows footage from the Korean War and all these other wars too makes you feel really depressed yeah, before, really before the movie has <laughs> even started then we get to the actual movie and we're on this beach in Spain and it's beautiful looking everyone's enjoying themselves on the beach until this dead woman's body washes up on shore ambulance comes and takes her away and they're kind of talking about her wounds and saying oh she's been stabbed several times by a very small knife then get introduced to tom and evelyn who are an english couple and they are vacationing in spain they arrive at this coastal town benevis big festival going on there's fireworks yeah. and there's all these parades and everything looks like a fun time they're having a hard time finding a hotel because this festival is driven all these tourists there there's no place to stay but this isn't even their final destination they're trying to find this kind of secluded island called Alamanzora when they're kind of being showed by the tour guide where it is it's not even on the map like he just <laughs> yeah. points at some random spot in the water it should be here yeah 400 <laughs> miles or so it's like 400 miles that's a long fucking way to travel to find out nothing, it's not there. nothing is there <laughs> yeah. they spend one night there and they're kind of talking and you find out while well, she's pregnant with their third child and you kind of get the sense that he didn't really want this third kid. Next day they set out to this island and they rent a boat and they go way the hell out and they finally find it, right? They, <laughs> Lucky for them. <laughs> they get to shore and there's this kid fishing all by himself. And there's a couple of kids swimming too. Yeah. And What are you fishing for there? The kid just doesn't answer him. He's like, what do you use for tackle? And he goes to open the kid's tackle box. He just stops him. Yeah. Dare, stares at this Ding. guy. <laughs> they start wandering this town and there's nobody around. It's like completely abandoned. And Tom's like, well, maybe, you know, they're having a festival on the other side of the island and that's mm. where everyone is. And they go into a restaurant and you see all this chicken that's been burning. Evelyn's pregnant, so she doesn't want to walk around too much. So she stays put at this restaurant. Tom goes to go look for somebody. And this weird, mysterious girl shows up, goes to Evelyn and like touches her belly, puts her ear to listen to the baby and all this creepy music's playing. <laughs> and then she just kind of like buggers off, just runs away. Tom's looking around, he's finding nothing. And there's one shot where he's in this grocery store and he thinks that no one's there, but really out of his sight is this dead woman laying there behind all these shelves. Evelyn hears the phone ring on the wall, picks it up, but there's no answer. There's nobody there. Tom ends up coming back. The phone rings again, so he goes and answers it, and there's a woman on the other end in a different language that he can't understand. So Tom and uh, Evelyn, they end up going to the hotel that they were supposed to stay at, where the keys are, 
there's a few keys that are missing, which means that the rooms have been actually rented out. So Tom goes to explore some more. When he comes back, Evelyn tells him that she saw an old man. There's this little girl, too. The old man is kind of behind this wall. You can't really see him. You see his cane. Yeah, and she, the, the little girl grabs his cane and just beats him to death But behind that wall. You don't really see what's happening. Then the girl takes off and Tom goes up to the old man and he's dead. And so he picks up the old man and he puts him into like this barn on all this hay and everything. All of a sudden then he hears giggling. Turns back and he opens the door and he sees that the kids have strung him up like a pinata and they're taking like this sickle and they're they're <laughs> whacking him with it in the in like the head and the neck and everything. All of a sudden Evelyn starts screaming. He starts calling Tom's name. And so Tom rushes back. There's this guy with a broken bottle. They calm him down and he proceeds to tell a bit of a story about what's going on with all these kids. The kids awoke and they started laughing and they started going door to door and every house they entered you could hear screaming. Nobody in the town could really do anything because who could kill a child? Then his daughter shows up. Come on, let, let's go find mommy. Of course he can't say no to his daughter so he lets her lead him away and they watch them leave and they watch him turn a corner and you hear him screaming. I assume that's the end of that poor bugger. They rush off and they find a jeep and they try to start it up but of course it's not starting right and as they're struggling with this you see all the kids from the town start to gather up and stare them down and that's where we're gonna end the plot so if you want to see what happens with Tom and Evelyn and how they're gonna get out of this fucking quagmire keep watching 1976's Who Can Kill a Child and there's a lot more that happens Ooh. yet. They still find themselves in a, quite a few strange situations. <laughs> First thing we have to say about this movie, it is fantastic. Yeah. It is such a damn good movie. It accomplishes everything a good horror movie should accomplish. A couple goes to a mysterious island and there's killer children. Sounds pretty <laughs> simple, but it's the way that they do it. Brilliant, I think. Yeah. The way they started off, too, with that... Doc, with all those documentary pieces sort of driving home that adults are kind of the problem here, yeah. right? Adults are always making decisions that are affecting children and the children are the victims yeah. in everything, right? They always have to pay the price for the decisions we make. This movie is a perfect example of a slow burn and how to build suspense because it uses the less is more tactic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's not much dialogue. There's not much music. Mm -hmm. When there is music, it's very good and very creepy. Long shots of silence, yeah. which helps build the suspense, right? And the way they use the sound too, right? It's quiet, it's quiet, it's quiet. Then that phone rings like, mm. Jesus Christ! And it's that awful 70s... Yeah. Like, oh, man! And <laughs> so they really know what they're doing as far as building suspense and like making you really feel like you're on the edge of your seat just waiting for something to happen. You really get invested with these characters from the start of the movie. They do an excellent job in uh, character development, right? Uh, learning about Tom and Evelyn. The music helps to drive the movie forward too because it's got this weird nursery rhyme Which makes song. sense, right? Yeah, with like a dark twist. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's perfect and it's unsettling. And again, th there's not music throughout the whole movie. There's lots of moments where there's no music. It's yeah. just dead silent as they're looking around this abandoned island and it, it kind of helps you be put in their spot, mm -hmm. right? You feel the the loneliness with them because they're not hearing music. Yeah, yeah Why exactly, would you be yeah. hearing music at that point? <laughs> yeah, it helps you absorb yeah. the situation, yeah. right? And then music comes in when shit starts to hit the fan, when the kids show up and the action picks up. Yeah. Then there's music. The cinematography in this movie is fantastic. Well, yeah. How can it not be being shot on these beautiful, like, islands in Spain, like, come these on. resorts and yeah. all that, with all the buildings painted white. Yeah. And... But not just the setting, but the way the movie is shot, and the way that the director framed all the shots is really good, because you know this place is abandoned, mm -hmm. and you're always like, oh, oh, 
looking? Like, where are where are they? Yeah, you know the kids are somewhere, right? Like, in every shot, you're trying to like, it's like, where's Waldo almost? Like, yeah. where are those little bastards hiding? And he frames it in a way where you're always kind of like, ah. They're, they're somewhere, you know? Yeah, and I like how you follow Tom a lot in this movie. He explores yeah. the ins and outs of a few of these buildings around where they are. And I like how the camera follows him. You're always wondering, it's like, oh man, is something going to jump out at him and just fucking hit him over the head or what? Like, yeah. what's going to happen? The way that he's always leaving Evelyn back by herself too. Yeah. It's like, what's going on with Evelyn back there? Like, yeah. what the and fuck? She's pregnant, so it's like the stakes are even higher. There's a lot of really creepy moments in this mm -hmm. movie that just kind of like, whoa, like Jesus. Well, first of all, the children are creepy. Yeah, they're always smiling, but they don't say anything. Which is great, because <laughs> if they talked, it would kind of wreck the movie. The fact that they're silent makes it creepier. Where they got the old man strung up like a pinata. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, holy Jesus, that's that's wild. There's like another really creepy scene where they make it to like a different part of the island and there's this little hut and a family living there and they got kids and you're not yeah. sure what's happening with those kids yet. They come out from talking with this family and some of the other kids mm -hmm. who you know are killer kids have spent spoken to these other kids yeah and yeah. now they're all staring them down and you're like <laughs> oh man that's super creepy they're just staring at them and they kind of get on the jeep and bugger off and you kind of know they left that family to their death yeah <laughs> yeah the poor bastards there's another great scene where they hole up in this room there's a whole bunch of kids like with a battering ram <laughs> trying to get in they're all ingenuitive and there's another kid crawling up the side of the building and gets to like the window but there's bars on the window and he's got this gun he's like smiling and this yeah. fucking evil smile pointing this gun and you're like Jesus Christ, like if you were in that position, what the fuck do you do? Like, yeah. this movie puts these characters in these like no-win situations and you're like, oh, what would I do? Yeah. I don't know what I would do. Again, who can kill a child? Yeah, you know? that's right. This is how they're managing to get away with all this shit. Yeah. Finally, Tom manages to shoot that kid and then the kids kind of disperse because they do. They weren't expecting. They weren't expecting that. Yeah. Yeah. They weren't yeah. expecting anybody to stand up yeah. to them. Go silent again. The way they use the the sound, like it's all crazy. You hear these kids, yeah. boom, everything just stops, mm -hmm. and the kids just kind of dissipate and go away. Yeah. And, it, and it's again the way they use sound and the way they pace the movie. Yeah, it's great. It's great. The acting in this movie is fantastic. And again, like you just need the two leads to really knock it out of the park and they yeah. do. Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, they do an excellent job of carrying this movie. Crazy ending for one thing. Like Tom fights for his life basically yeah. and he Let's just say he takes out more than a few kids. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, you're like, wow! <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was not expecting this. He's kind of had enough already. Yeah. But even after that, there's a plot twist at the end, which is really, really cool. Yeah. So obviously this movie is a message it's trying to put forward about children, children's rights, and they even talk, they get a touch on abortion a little bit, like all these horrible things that adults do. Yeah killing kids before they're even born, starting wars, starting famines, all has to do with kind of like why these kids are rebelling. I mm -hmm. thought that was very interesting. And I think there's even more kind of on the abortion theme in this than, a, than it's at the surface level. I think there's right. a bit more below the surface about what they're trying to say about even that. One of the better Killer Kids movies that we've seen. If not the best. Yeah, um, and you have a lot, and a lot of them we actually covered. Uh, you got The Devil Times Five, which is... <laughs> a bit more, it's more of a farce than this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a great movie, yeah. but yeah, it's not as poignant as this one. Um, you've got Children of the Corn, which again, that has kind of supernatural aspects to it. Again, doesn't have as poignant of a message, or a message at all, really. And this predates Children of the Corn, the novel, or the story, by one year. Yeah, so... so what, what does that tell you? I wonder if maybe Stephen King saw this, and, yeah. hmm, maybe I'll write my own take on that. Yeah. And also you have Village of the Dam, too, which is another supernatural feature, right? Yeah. And so this movie, it really takes a more realistic tone and it helps you to be able to relate to what's going on, right? It yeah. helps you to be able, like it grounds the, the idea 
there's not really much supernatural stuff happening in this, which not makes really. it a bit scarier because you don't know why mm -hmm. the children have turned to killing the adults. Yeah. You know, in the village of the damned, while well, there are aliens going to take over the world, children of the corn, they're led by like this cult leader. Yeah. You know. I said! This is like. <laughs> You have no clue. No. And that's what no. makes it scary. Definitely recommend that you go watch this movie, like, as soon as you can. That's right, yeah. It's uh, it's on YouTube, you know? Watch it on YouTube for free. I don't know if it's public domain or not, but it, while it's there, go check it out. Yeah, definitely. They do not make them like this anymore. Nope. That's, uh, you know, it came up in my mind so many times that I was watching this. It's like, man, they just don't make them like this anymore. Yeah. And I wish that they did. So, go check it out, and until next time... Keep drinking.